Now this video is gonna be pretty serious. I'm not gonna make any jokes today. I'm not gonna compare this graphics card to various mid-tier STDs. No, we're gonna be professional. I'm not gonna accidentally break anything and we're gonna be serious. video is super straightforward. We're going to take this Korn RX 560 and we're going to unshackle it and turn it into something a little bit better because as it stands, it's actually not a very good value for money, uh, but maybe we can fix that. Now, if you haven't seen the first video that I did of this graphics card, um, go check it out first. I'll have it linked in the description below because it's a pretty weird graphics card and this video is going to have some spoilers in it. So go and check that out and then continue watching this video. As we discovered in that video, this is actually an RX 560D, which is a slightly cut down version of the RX 560. And they're actually very similar to an RX 460. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try and flash a proper RX 560 BIOS onto this graphics card to unlock those last shader cores and hopefully get a higher core and memory frequency as well so that we can get some better performance from this, this little weird graphics card. I actually have pretty high hopes for this video because it seems as though people have quite an easy time flashing an RX 560 BIOS on an RX 460 and unlocking the extra couple of cores that you get. Uh, so I think it should work on this card. Now the only concern that I have about this actual project is the fact that this card doesn't have a 6-pin PCI Express power connector on it. So the GPU is going to be limited to the 75 watts that it can actually draw through the PCI Express connector. Now my brother has actually bought a couple of RX 560s and according to him it was quite difficult to find an RX 560 with a power connector. Uh, so hopefully that shouldn't be much of a problem. And when you go onto AMD's website you can see that the card has a TDP of between 60 watts and 80 watts. So it means it can function under 70 5 watts as a 560. Now from the get-go it seems that it's actually easier to flash a new BIOS onto an AMD graphics card than it is on an Nvidia graphics card. You just need to download this piece of software, download a BIOS that you want to install and then you can flash a BIOS onto the card. However I did immediately run into a problem where it didn't want to flash a BIOS onto the card because there was a, a vendor ID mismatch uh, which meant that you know the, the actual software knew that the BIOS didn't belong to this graphics card. So what I ended up having to do to actually fix that problem is download an AMD BIOS editor and then I opened up the BIOS from this graphics card and then just kind of transposed all of the like um, vendor information and stuff like that into the BIOS from a different card. So the first one that I tried was from an Asus Strix variant of the RX 560 and it actually just worked straight out of the box. We opened up uh, the entire GPU, so we didn't have 896 shader cores anymore. We had the full 1024 shader cores and it supposedly overclocked the, the GPU as well. Although when I started running tests and games, it didn't really work because the GPU wouldn't go above about 400 megahertz for some reason. I don't know why, but it just didn't clock properly. Uh, so I tried to edit the actual like TDP information in the BIOS of the Asus um, of the Asus card, but that didn't work. So I just tried several BIOSes and then eventually got to the Sapphire RX 560 BIOS, which just worked perfectly. We got a core clock of 1300 megahertz and a memory clock of 1750 megahertz, which is a pretty big step up from the stock card. So not only are we getting extra shader cores on this RX 560, but we're also getting a higher core clock and memory clock on it. Uh, so we should get better performance. So let's have a look at the performance we got from this card. Now this is the exciting bit. We get to see if the work actually paid off with this graphics card. Now after it kind of proved itself that it didn't have any Oh, I was actually about to make a venereal disease joke again. The fact that it proved that it wasn't dodgy anymore uh, meant that I could test it in the main kind of GPU testing system that I have for the channel, which has a 9700K in it, just so that we know there's no CPU bottleneck. Now, the first game I tested was CSGO, and as you can see, it performed a decent amount better. Um, it's not massive, but you could tell the difference. 
Uh, and then finally, I tested Battlefield 5. I only did two games. Uh, because, you know, it's just about seeing whether or not you can unlock the cores and stuff like that. With Battlefield 5, the difference is pretty big. It's pretty much in line with what you would expect, but it feels very different. Uh, the actual unlocked cores and the higher core and memory speed does really help make the game feel more playable. And now I hear you asking, is that all you're gonna do? You're just gonna flash a new BIOS onto it and then do two benchmarks? No, I'm going to try and overclock it and see what kind of extra performance we can get above the new BIOS. Now, unfortunately, this didn't go particularly well because any overclock that I put above the actual core frequency already didn't give me any benefit. Uh, I tried to overclock the memory and the core and every time I ran benchmarks, I actually got worse performance than I did with just the new BIOS. However, when I actually started to monitor what the graphics card was doing while running these benchmarks, the issue became clear. With the, the new BIOS on here, the core sits at 1300 MHz and the memory sits at 1750 MHz. The moment that I overclock either the core or the memory or both, it starts fluctuating the actual core frequency. So while running like a CSGO benchmark, for example, for some of it, I'll get like 1400 megahertz on the core, but for most of it, it was actually running below 1300 megahertz on the core, even if I only overclocked the memory on the card. Now, the reason why this happens is actually pretty obvious. The graphics card doesn't have enough power available. Uh, when at the 1300 megahertz and 1750 megahertz, that's as much as we can get with just 75 watts. Uh, if we wanted a bigger overclock, we'd have to go all the way into Chuck Norris territory of overclocking. So unfortunately, that's all the core and graphics card has to give. Now, over the course of making this video, I actually became fairly irritated at Korn because it doesn't really make sense why they used this cutdown BIOS on the card. They were selling it as a full-blown RX 560. So why not just flash a full-blown RX 560 BIOS onto it? You know, if it was sold as a 560D, okay, yeah, then maybe it makes a bit of sense. But it's not like this is a cheaper version of the 560. They should have just given you the full-blown BIOS. But yeah, with that, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. Follow me on all of the various social medias. I'll have it linked in the description below. And uh, my Twitch account is also linked in the description below. I'm going to be uh, streaming later today, so you can come check that out if you're interested. And yeah, until the next video, bye-bye.